Geographers often ask why systems like neighborhoods, villages, and school districts are organized the way they are. Geographers are also interested in examining how the natural environment and the built environment affect each other and affect human behavior. Twelfth graders in Steve Niederhauser's class are out in the field, literally, trying to answer these questions. They are employing geographic themes and spatial analysis to investigate the history of local issues and connect them to the present situation in Thetford. I think geographers are extremely curious. And as they drive along a car, they wonder, why is that stone wall there? And how is it being used today? Or house types. Why, why are the houses in this particular neighborhood all of a particular house type? Anything can be geography, that's the thing. That's the problem in teaching geography because everything is a geography. The first question I asked was, what is the capital of Maine? And kids pondered that and I, I don't know if they actually came up with the right answer or not. And then I said, you know what the right answer to that question is? is who cares? Who cares what the capital of Maine is? Do you care what the capital of Maine is? I don't care what the capital of Maine is. But if you ask why is the capital of Maine where it is, now that's an interesting question and worth answering. The main uh, scope of the course, which is to look at these uh, larger issues, which incorporate all kinds of, of information about humans on Earth. It incorporates history and demography and study of religion and anthropology. It takes all these subjects and looks for the big picture. And I really think that's what human geography is all about, getting the big picture. We basically learn about how people affect the land around them and how they're affected by the land around them. I think the key to all of it is, a, is spatial analysis analyzing the space that something exists in. Uh, why is it there? How did it get there? Why, you know, what are the reasons for it existen its existence? These projects are not mapping exercises. They really have to explain something, answer a question, contrast um, different facets of the community, you know, really answer why something is where it is. That's, that's extremely important. These aren't reports. These are, should be, you know, analytical in, in nature. Our project right now is about a bridge in North Thetford that in 1973 was um, destroyed. destroyed by dynamite. We're going to show the effects of the bridge before and after. We're not really sure what it was like before the bridge and what it was like after, so we're going to do comparisons with numbers and populations and actually map out the locations of businesses in the bridge before and after. A lot of kids really just want to write a report. You know, the writing the, of the report is, um, I don't know, just sort of a horrifying idea to me. And uh, I, I am fighting it all the time. Kids ask to write reports. Uh, I had one girl who uh, said, what? why are we doing all this? Can't we please just write reports on countries? And I just say, no, we can't write reports on, on countries. That's not what we're doing. Well, we can start by having that student ask questions and practice asking questions and ask questions and more questions. And when you get those answers, there are going to be more questions about that, those answers. So we just have to keep asking questions. We don't have to have the answers every time. And we don't have to have the right answers when we do get answers, but we have to keep asking questions. We fish around a lot in September and October for good uh, project topics, you know, and, and any number of topics that have been abandoned. Um, some projects have run into trouble uh, with privacy issues, it's a big one. Um, our kids aren't aware lots of times of some of the problems that they're going to run into. So I try to head off some of those problems, and I keep pretty close ta uh, 
a pretty close rein on their journals, making sure that they're writing down what they're doing, uh, keeping track of all the time that they're spending. That's the other thing about these projects. I say get out of school, go away from campus, go out into the geography itself. And um, not that the school isn't part of the geography, but to get away from school and get out there and start collecting this data and start keeping, uh, keeping track. Think geographically. We're doing old school houses and focusing more on the consolidation of the, there were about seven school houses in the town of Thetford, um, one in each village. And we're kind of looking at why they closed when they did, um, where they were in location to kind of population and roads um, just for transportation, which we realized yesterday, which was one of the reasons why some of the schools did close. Oral projects get kids in the community meeting people and meeting people often in a different generation than themselves. And having the connection with the community like that is just invaluable. And they always, every time, come back very enthusiastic, having dealt, having dealt say, with an older person who's lived in a time span that they may have not given much thought about. Um, it, it's just got that personal touch. It's a tangible history and geography, you know, to just talk to that person, you know, be right there in the same room and, you know, give importance to things that they hadn't even really thought about before. In terms of history, uh, we have to collect this information as best we can while, while, it's, while, it's, while the getting is good. You know, we've got to get talk to people who know about, uh, about things that, that we may never even have heard about, have no idea about. Already these projects have gathered incredible stories. It also gets us involved with the community, which is nice. We get to know people in the community who we probably wouldn't have normally gotten to know. Um, like Charles Latham, who has a lot to say. He's very interesting and has a lot of stories to share with us. Um, it was really nice to meet him. He was somebody who I think we'd all heard of before but really never met and come in contact with and so this class really gets us involved in the community in terms of dealing with this project. We're going to use a lot of interviews in ours because um, a large portion of our project is going to be like people's personal experiences in the schools. This whole project is sort of like an investigation, so it's yeah. sort of like it's sort of like a roller coaster. We'll be doing really well, and we'll have everything planned out, and then one thing will screw up, and then everything goes wrong. Like I said, or I feel yeah. like everything goes wrong. We'll be excited, and then frustrated, and then excited, and then frustrated. Um, these projects are designed to educate. Uh, the local community, to help celebrate with the local community, to be of strong interest to the people who live right here in Thetford. Well, first of all, these projects have got to look good. Uh, these kids often t typically have spent a good month putting together a professional looking exhibit. That's a hurdle in itself. Uh, on the other hand, a really good looking project can hide the fact that there's not much content to it. Um, these projects are designed to educate uh, the local community, to help celebrate with the local community, to be of strong interest to the people who live right here in Thetford. Um, and there, there have been, all the projects have all been displayed at um, um, town meetings for the last couple years. Uh, we've also had them up at the uh, town library, and as demonstration pieces, they've been showed, uh, shown several places around the state. When we were looking for a focus, um, Steve kept saying, you need to find something that's going to interest the community, um, and something that's really going to grab the attention of the people, because we want something that's affecting them. It's changed the way I've um, th just, like, viewed our town kind of just because it's now I know why the school's here I know what led up to the school being here um, and then like Margaret said we both live in Post Mills and so coming into Post Mills I 
from the some of the sources that we have, there's old pictures and it tells about like stuff the school that was there obviously and then the um, different general stores that aren't there any longer. So I come along thinking like, oh well here was this and this is where this was and this is where that was. We were looking for the Cook School, which is way out in the middle of nowhere and there's no real houses around it and we we're sort of unsure about it's where on a dirt it was. Road. It's on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. And we knew that the house had burned, or the schoolhouse had burned down. And so we were just going to drive along the road and just look for old foundations. I was looking out the right side, and all of a sudden I saw these, like, just couple little bricks. And I was like, Sarah, stop! <laughs> That's very exciting. Thetford's not a, the most exciting place in the world. So, like, being excited about our town is sort of a new thing, and it's, it's fun. I like it. There's nothing like doing. There's nothing like actually getting your hands dirty. There's nothing like it. You've got to have kids out doing geography in the community. You've got to get them out collecting data. It might just be counting how many cars go by at a certain intersection because those are the things they're going to remember years from now. They don't remember the textbook and they don't, you know, these are the things that really make an impression and last. Got to get them out there. The inquiry process that these students are learning helps them develop good habits of mind, basing their investigations on good questions, searching for evidence, and evaluating data without jumping to conclusions are valuable skills. In the future, they will not only respect this process for their own investigations, but also demand that those in public life follow the same rules when coming to conclusions that will affect their lives.